Last week I received an order of marbled paper from Louise of Merendale Marbling in Tasmania. If my son helped reenact the delivery for dramatic effect, it may have looked more realistic if he'd bothered to put shoes on. I really wanted to use Louise's marbled paper in a project. Louise has been working on some historical patterns for me. I particularly wanted some non pareil patterns to use on stationary bindings. And how about that French pronunciation? That comes from over a week of watching the Tour de France. And there are also some non-traditional papers in the order. I particularly like the one with metallic colours. All bookbinders know how important decorative papers are to the hobby. In Australia, most of the fancy papers are imported. Thus, it's important that we support local artists. And if you are in Australia, I'd really like you to check out Louise's store and consider buying from her. Details are in the description below. And if you are after a particular design or colour, send Louise a message as I know she always has paper waiting to be put onto her store. I also needed an easier project since I had a lot of work this week and lost a full day to a power outage. If you've seen any of my videos where I use gold leaf, you'll know I have these very plain covers I use to protect the gold leaf while it's on the gold cushion. I've been meaning to dress these up for some time and decided the time had come. I really wanted to use the metallic design, but I liked it so much I also wanted to save it for a project. Instead, I picked what I believe is called a bouquet pattern. Since I'm running out of time, I've also decided not to do my usual voiceover describing in detail all the steps. I hope the video will be clear enough. I'll make the cover the same as the trays in the clamshell enclosure or the slipcase. I'll cut the base to size and laminate it to a piece of cardstock. Some people think this is time consuming but it makes attaching the walls so much easier. I'll make the tray 120 mm square with 20 mm high walls. If the tray was not square, I would make the board grain direction the same as the longest dimension. This minimizes expansion. For the walls, I put the grain direction in the long direction too. This means if there is any expansion, the tray just gets slightly taller rather than trying to break the tray apart at the corners. The only other thing I think is worth mentioning is dry fitting of the first two flaps inside the tray. This paper is fairly heavy, maybe 120 GSM. To make it easier to turn in the first two flaps inside the tray, I first fold them in dry and mitered the corners in the base. This made putting them down much easier once they had been glued. Because I finished by lining the tray with a piece of manila card, I didn't bother mitering the corners and removing the overlapping material in the base. I think I'll use this as a lead into a video on making a box with a lid. This tray is exactly how you would make the lid. If you have any questions about details, I'll try and answer them in the box video. Enjoy the music as I finish the gold leaf cover with marbled paper.
I hope you've enjoyed today's video without the usual voiceover. As always, I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. If you're able and want to, you can support the making of more videos like this through Patreon or with a one-off contribution, and the details are in the description below. To find videos I've made on specific topics or other projects, the best place to go is the DAS Bookbinding Video Guide. It's the index to the channel and there's a link in the description below. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button and select the notification bell. Until next time, cheerio!